Uh, hello, I'm Stan WB2LQF and today I'd like to demonstrate the newest member of the sculpture family of Begali Keys. This is the Begali Sculpture Swing. It's a side swiper or a cootie and it's a very creative, well-designed, well-engineered key that brings a new dimension to uh, those of us who love CW gives us the opportunity to uh, use a quality instrument to engage in a, a really old-fashioned kind of keying called side swiping. Side swiping evolved around the turn of the century where a lot of the old-time telegraph operators on the landline systems, the railroads, started to uh, find out that their, their wrists, their arms were given out they called it glass arm. Today we know it more like carpal tunnel syndrome and that was a result of the up and down movement of the wrist. The human body wears out after a while when you keep asking it to repetitively do the same thing. So before Horace Mann invented the bug, uh, just a couple years later, uh, some smart folks came to the uh, conclusion that a side to side movement wasn't a bad idea and then some of those folks with glass arms and couldn't do this anymore suddenly we're back in business so this is a Begali side swiper it's made entirely of stainless steel and if you look up front here this assembly right here is a sliding contact it slides all the way back here or up here and depending on the location that you select for it this thin extension arm upon which a gold-plated contact is mounted is going to feel more or less stiff. At the same time, if we look back here, we've got these concentric springs. They look a lot like pistons, they act a lot like pistons. And they determine both the center position of the arm and also the feel. Uh, that the operator gets back here how much resistance there is and that's controlled by this cam which is adjusted right here so once you got it set up sight swiping is almost a natural feeling it's certainly more natural than uh, going up and down I don't even have a straight key anywhere in the shack anymore uh, my wrist gave out a long time ago it's different from bugs uh, bugs make the dits and the daws. Well, you make the daws, they make the dits. And of course, paddles make your dits and your daws. However, you got to have the overhead of an electronic keyer and more wires. With a swiper, that in your transceiver or your transmitter, it's all you need. And it's a great alternative to a keyer and it's a great alternative to a bug for those who find that managing the transition between the dits and the daws can be sometimes problematic so why don't we go ahead and give her a try Okay, so let's take a look and see how we did with the swiper. Not too shabby. Look at that. By the way, the equal signs are uh, da 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 da, a BT. And uh, as you can see, didn't make any mistakes. And the CW machine usually catches 
any significant spacing errors or timing errors. So, there's an alternative to uh, a paddle or a bug for those who uh, care to check it out. And if you don't want to spend the money for a Begali uh, sculpture swing sideswiper, you can make your own out of a hacksaw blade, some wood, and a few screws. That's the way the old timers did it. 73 from WB2LQF. Oh, by the way, if you look at uh, this transmission, it uses uh, some keywords that allow the operator with the CW machine to automatically have the CW machine log the entire transmission. If you look back at my, uh, my operating desk here, you see there's no paper visible, no pen visible. Don't need it anymore. And do everything right here with the uh, with the CW machine. And I don't really have to do anything except when I'm all done and I uh, I send my uh, SK. Watch what happens. It's going to log it. Okay, you see down there was the last time I spoke with uh, N2DE and that was just there for uh, reference information for me so I knew before he ever told me what his name was even if I hadn't worked him for years. Now it's black. Now if I uh, don't need that. Now if I go up here with the mouse and I scroll on Scroll edit right there. You hear that? It tells me that there's his record. Okay. It says uh, N2DE, Ulrich in the USA, and there's all the information, including uh, the town he lives in and uh, the RSTs, just as I sent them. And I didn't have to do a gosh darn thing, except uh, basically work them and use a couple of keywords. Uh, the DE, the, uh, the DR before his name, for Dear Ulrich. The 4 before the, uh, the signal report that he gave me, the uh, 599 right there, that's a keyword. And then the from tells me that the next... Uh, uh, um, the next item is going to be where he lives. Okay? When I say RST, that's the outgoing signal report. And the uh, machine already knows the date and the time and all that good stuff. And uh, it already knows I'm on uh, 40 meters here. 40 meters. Right there because I have the KX3 connected to the uh, to the, to the computer here, all right, through a uh, USB cable, and everything is uh, automated very nicely. So I get the best of both worlds. I can sit here, and I can I can operate old-fashioned CW. I can copy in my head. I can copy on this electronic mill right here. I can send on all my keys, and I can automatically log. And the important aspects for me are that I can use all my keys. I can copy in my head if I choose, or I can copy on my mill. I don't use any paper. And I don't have to worry about a logbook anymore because this little device down here holds 12,000 entries. And I can easily upload them because this device also will create ADA files. And did I mention it automatically will update? Uh, logbook of the world or EQSL, your choice or both. So how about that, huh? Oh, it even does something else. Look at this. If I uh, put a cursor on QSOs, it brings up the uh, the last 20 QSOs I had. Alrighty. So thanks for stopping by. 73.